Hey everyone, Shay here and welcome back to a new video. In today's video, I'm going to be going through everything you need to know about masking in Vegas Pro. So without any hesitation, let's get right into the video. So before we hop into Vegas Pro, I just want to simply define what a mask is. A mask is simply a selection that can be made on your video clips that can hide a particular aspect of your video. You can also invert a mask to reveal certain parts of your video. Masking can be used to single out objects from a video, like a subject from a background or a background from a foreground. So let's hop into Vegas Pro so I can show you guys how that's done. So hopping into Vegas, I got some stock footage of uh, a donut, but you can use whatever footage you'd like. So to start masking, you simply drag your footage on your timeline, which I've already done. And then you hit this little pan and crop icon over here. Once you hit this icon, it'll bring you to the pan and crop menu. And then from there, you can hit this little checkbox over here to start masking. Once you hit mask, you'll notice that the highlight switches from position to mask. You're also presented with different tools so that you can start adding and editing your masks. So before we get masking, let me introduce you guys to some of the tools from the menu. So first up, we have our cursor, pretty self-explanatory. And then next up, we have the pen tool or the anchor creation tool, which is what you will use to create the anchor points off of the actual mask. Next up, we have the anchor deletion tool, which allows you to delete points from your selection. We then have the split tangent tool, which allows you to convert your straight edges into curved edges. Next up, we have the rectangular mask tool, which allows you to create a mask, well, in a rectangular shape, which is the same for the oval or circle mask tool, which allows you to create a mask in a circle or oval shape or a semicircle shape by holding Alt. Lastly, we have some navigation tools, but we won't get into those at this moment. Just before we get into masking, you'll also notice that we have a timeline here at the bottom. This timeline allows you to create keyframes so that as your cursor moves from one keyframe to the next, your mask and selection will actually change. This is especially useful when the objects or subject that you're masking is changing in shape and in size and rotation throughout the video. So let's actually get masking. And so what we'll do is we'll move our playhead to the beginning of the timeline and then create the anchor creation tool. This is the most popular tool when it comes to creating masks. So to start using this tool, all you have to do is click and select an outline of the object that you want to mask. You can probably see that to actually fully mask this donut, it's going to take a long time. So give me a second while I create a rough selection of this donut. And then when you create your last selection point, your mask is created. Now I made a very rigid and rough one, but in your guys' videos, make sure to create smooth masks to get a better effect. So now if we go back to our video preview tab, we can see that the mask has been applied. And after you've created a mask, you'll be presented with some properties that you can edit and change to further edit the mask. You can edit the position of your mask using the X and Y axis values. However, what I would recommend is using the cursor tool, making sure that it's on move freely and not on move X or move Y only. Make sure it's on move freely and now you can actually move the mask wherever you want it to be. You can also change the mask mode simply by hitting the drop down menu and then changing it to either negative, disabled, or keeping it on positive. If you put it to negative, it will invert the mask so that whatever you've selected will be hidden. If it's on positive, the mask will simply show only that which you have selected. And if it's on disabled, then nothing will appear. You can also change the opacity of your selection simply by hitting the drop down menu and playing around with the slider. And if your selection is too rough like mine over here, you can change and edit the feather type. So if you select in, it will start feathering your mask internally. If you select out, it will start feathering it externally. And if you select both, well, it will do well both. If you just need to create a rough mask that doesn't need to be pixel perfect, then the feather tool can be of great help. You can also animate your mask by creating keyframes. In the example that I have here, you can see that a hand actually goes into our mask. So if I was to create another keyframe simply by hitting this icon over here, then hitting right click, select all, and then deleting all my anchor points, I can create a new mask 
on that specific keyframe. Now the hand is out of our selection. So if I scrub from the first keyframe to the second keyframe, we can see that the shape of our mask actually changes when the playhead moves onto the second keyframe. Masking can be used in a variety of ways to create more dynamic effects or simply to give you more control over your footage. While this process can be extremely time consuming, sometimes taking days or weeks just to create a sequence of keyframes and masks, your creativity is simply the limit when it comes to creating dynamic masks. I'd also recommend checking out my previous upload about keyframing, link in the description as well. By merging the concept of keyframing and masking, you can create even more dynamic masks by animating or moving them. And that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed and learned something new, please make sure to hit the subscribe and like button down below and follow my socials, links in the description below. But up until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Je de l'enfer, sur un gros feu.